Well, hello, people, and welcome back to part 58 of Orchid Bay. I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I thought it's been an extremely long time since we started an episode from the top of Mud Mountain. And look how far <laughs> this city has come. Absolutely wonderful, that view, isn't it? Do you guys remember when I once said the view from here one day will be nice? And one day, everyone, one day we will have that view. I can't wait to come back here <laughs> once that view is ready. That is going to be something truly special, I think. That's going to be a really fun view. <laughs> here it is, everyone. Here it finally is. And well, this is related to today's episode because we are, of course, at the top of Mad Mountain, which is a nature reserve. And it's still level one after all this time because it hasn't had a single visitor. <laughs> the, the residents of Orchid Bay are just over this view. They don't care for it anymore. They don't want to come up here. And everyone's just done with it. So <laughs> we need to... Build a nature reserve because I want to head uh, into the rural depths of Orchid Bay in today's episode. And, and by the way, this is hooked in, you know, the path comes down the mountain. I think it's just too far for them to walk, you know? Like, no one can be asked <laughs> to trek up the mountain. I can totally sympathise with that as well. But, uh, you know, it's here, it's hooked in, but no one cares for it. <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, but yes, we do need a higher level nature reserve. And indeed, we're going to make a little... Raw kind of campsite, camping grounds, nature trails, couple of bouldering sites, lots of fun nature detailing and builds. We're going to use some of the log cabins from the Hotels and Retreats DLC out here as well today. Uh, just to build a fun little nature reserve camping campsite or whatever this episode is called. <laughs> I'm not quite sure of the name of it yet. But either way, let's build some rural camping fun in Vanilla CS, shall we? So, thankfully last episode we already prepared a bunch of connections out here, so we're going to start going out on this little national road. And I imagine we'll also have a dirt road coming out of here as well, but we'll cover that side of the river uh, in a second. So, let's bring... this one's too short, are you, are you sure about that? So let's start bringing these roads around the riverbank. Doesn't really matter if we destroy any rocks here, we'll place them back in our detail in time up today. And I guess this is where we'll make the entrance to the site here, I think. So, let's bring our roads out on a... Actually, snapped angle with the rail bridge is probably best here. So we'll clear this up, and then let's bring that one up there. So we'll do want like an actual arrivals point. Let's go ahead and get some uh, car parking down here. Again, not a huge one. So we'll do some railroads of Japan parking here. Two should be enough, I think. Yeah, I think that should be okay. I think the other vanilla ones are a little bit um, kind of too inner city for what I'm after here. We'll have this up. Super annoying that we get that concrete tear in. We'll, we'll try and fix that in our detail and time lapse because I really hate that. The way to fix that is it is with move it. All you've got to do is set them to the same height as the road. I don't know why they behave like that in vanilla. It's quite irritating, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Uh, so let's grab a nature reserve gate. Uh, we will go for which one do we want here? Small nature reserve. We should go for the one that's a bit more grandiose. I think the grandiose one's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, National Park, but I do want it to also have roads running through it, but of course we're going to switch to dirt roads because I don't really want uh, street lighting through this bit of the park. So definitely on board for some uh, hotel cabins against the river here, so I'm going to make sure that our dirt road against the river is positioned to allow that to happen. And we'll bring this up here. Now, is it going to go over here? I guess it could be an idea. We can't tunnel the dirt roads, can we? They can only be turned into a bridge. Yeah, okay. Maybe a tunnel through here at some point, but probably not. It might be a bit too much engineering for what one out this way. Uh, but certainly a vibe I do want to respect is to actually bring in uh, a little elevated dirt road here. So we get the bridge, because this is such a cute vanilla aesthetic, isn't it? These little wooden bridges. Just because the terrain difference is here, I want to make sure that we mimic the terrain on this side as well. Make it easier to bring that road back down. There we go, that's cool. And then this can go probably in a similar direction. Let's make sure we've not destroyed too much terrain here. Sort of even this out a little bit with some sloping. Uh, a touch of soften will help as well once we've messed with it. Wonderful news. Then while we're here, let's go ahead and bring this dirt road back in under the rail bridge. It's going to be such a cool little aesthetic around here today. I think this uh, um, rail bridge is actually going to make such a huge difference to the build, uh, which I'm really looking forward to actually. Not often we come to build stuff like this in Vanilla CS just because of the, how niche and specific the build is and you only end up doing one of them. Oh, look at that already. <laughs> that's, um, 
I think that's it, you know, that's the build done, everyone. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Of course, no, we're joking. There's still a bit more to do. But, uh, look at that for a vibe, right? Love it. I'm very easily pleased, <laughs> as it turns out. Show me a bridge, a couple of bridges in a, in a video game, and I'm happy. Wonderful scenes. Fantastic. Cool. So I want to get these uh, log cabins down, first of all. So let's jump into our park stuff. We'll get hotels and retreats out. Yes, we want the rental cabins. So they want sightseeing in nature, which is incredibly green over here. So how are we feeling if we have them in and around this spot here? That's a great little place to chill, isn't it? That's really nice. Just by the river there. I guess you could go for a swim here. It's not too deep, is it? Is a little fast flowing and if you did get swept away by the tide you would end up down by the radiation <laughs> that's uh being swept into karen but that's fine right that, that's not today's problem uh so i guess we'll just go for i don't know actually i know what i want to do i'm back into my nature reserve stuff what i would like to do is flesh out each of the rental cabins with nature reserve assets to essentially make little mini holiday parks by them. So we'll paint out our park area here. And we will name this today after one of our uh, delicious Patreon subscribers. And this one will be called Katka Cabins after our wonderful Patreon subscriber Katka. Thank you so much for your support Katka. You are a secret blend of the old herbs and spices. But once you have this in now, let's go ahead and just manscape this forest around it a little bit. And then we can kind of give each one a little boundary. So why don't we go for First of all, a little nature reserve pathway next to each of these uh, log cabins. So we'll bring it out from here. Of course, these do affect the terrain, so I don't want to destroy that riverbank too much. What we could even do, actually, is use the vanilla pathway as we come down towards the river. Is it worth softening these out, or does that just make it worse? Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that aesthetic. That's not too bad, is it? But they do have a pathway down to the water if they wanted to go for a swim. Uh, and then off the back of that we can give them uh, a little lean-to shelter, although these are going to affect the terrain, so I want to make sure we're not destroying it too much. There we go, they have the little shelter there. Uh, they could also have a little lookout tower, which I'm also going to pretend is perhaps a little climbing frame for any small people that decide to turn up. I have also got the big camping side as well, haven't we? How does this compare? I wouldn't mind a bit of camping. Maybe the cabins are a bit more luxurious and expensive, but you know you can also camp there as well. And that just kind of fits there, doesn't it? You know, if it if it fits, it sits. So let's have this near the car park then, because a bit of an entrance into the park. I want it to lose its connection because I'd like to actually connect the park life assets via park pathways, so it's gonna be quite a lot of fun. I have this here, and let's also use this as an excuse to hook into the main gate now while we're, while we're over here. Yeah, let's just come straight out there. Uh, is that alright? Do we maybe want to actually do a little curve there first? Looks a little bit weird the way that hooked in, didn't it? Cool. Uh, we'll have that around there. That's very fancy, and we'll do some nice... Oh, we'll do it now, because... Love Nature was a fencing. Let's please, everyone. Love Nature was a fence on there. I'm already having a ton of fun with this build. <laughs> it's very cool. Cool, so we can have a campsite there. And we'll place a few of these around too, but uh, we definitely want to get this park actually leveling up too, because we want to hit level five today, hopefully. And um, see what else we can get down. Well, I guess we're going to get things down as we do things over here, aren't we? Uh, I'd love a lookout tower as well. We have that up here. Be a kind of cool place to come spot some trains over here, wouldn't it? I think I'd be happy with that. Yeah, definitely up there. I think we can expand it into the hillside at least. So we'll give that a connection in a second. Let's actually plan out where we could possibly bring that mountain trail up. We might need to terraform almost a little uh, switchback area for it. Something along those sorts of lines and maybe try and also start shifting the terrain around here as well. The way we did that terraforming last episode, it's a little bit a little bit obvious for me at the minute. It needs to kind of be re-chiseled and made to look a bit more natural. This sort of stuff should do it for me, I think. There we go, and a little bit of softening around that. Or oh, slope terrain, even. There we go. Cool. 
So let's now meander that nature reserve pathway up to here as well. And you will come on a free form number and we'll just come over this way and we'll attach other nature reserve assets onto this path as well at some point. And then let's see if we can come up toward this hillside here. Provide a connection with that lookout tower. And I guess it would be cool if we could bring this maybe up alongside the uh, the train line here. For a bit of a viewing point for any keen train spotters. Although this is supposed to be a nature escape, I suppose. But it's got a connection for right now anyway. But uh, as I do a premise for dropping in log cabins, and I'm really happy with this. Uh, we could also come in and do some prop detailing, which we probably will do during our detail and time lots. We've also got the nature reserve props as well, where I'd be certainly happy to give them maybe a couple of tiles. So we give them two tiles. They can have a picnic bench. We'll give each cabin a sign. Almost as like it's kind of warning them, isn't it? You know, a little walking sign there, you know, don't get too close to the water or don't swim if it's too high, etc. Uh, we can also have a little log store behind the lean-to to keep that fire burning. And a couple of canoes as well, perhaps, that are ready to go into the water for a bit of an explore. We'll also get one of these outhouses in case anyone needs a poo. We'll have that there. And I guess we can also have a well on the way from the, um, the outhouse, of course, so no one gets cholera. Never a good thing to get on hold, is it? And then we'll also have a few bushes around here as well. The old content creator trees will be quite cute as well here, imagine. A nice shady oak to sit out under the, the picnic table there. And then once you've established each little cabin, I think just have a cute little uh, nature reserve fence boundary here. And various ones, maybe just down to the water. And then this side as well, just so it kind of like demarcates them a little bit and people can sort of have a bit of privacy and then that's when we can bring all that pine forest that we lost from just trimming it all back uh, back into play as well and bushes around here too so does that even satisfy the um yes it does <laughs> for once and uh, we can probably whack the prices right up on these actually and this should contribute significant amounts to the excelsior hotel chain which is still only level two. <laughs> we really haven't put that much time into our hotels and retreats, have we? But a uh, big fan of this little configuration, right? Really like this. Lots of fun. Very different to any other sort of CS building. Uh, hotels and retreats and the nature reserve packs is actually uh, quite a popular combo, isn't it? Although we do have people cheating the parking system <laughs> by choosing to park on the roads at the car parks. Uh, let's just change out to wide sidewalks here in that case then, to stop them from doing that. Cool. Send that all the way back down actually, make it a bit more of a narrow road. Cool. There we go, now they're in the car parks. Uh, there's probably some fire assets that would work nicely out here as well. Um, yeah, things like the fire watchtowers. We can paint up a little path there, maybe that comes out of the main gate. And... Possibly some of the unique buildings. I don't think we've used the weather research station yet, have we? And I would like to try and use um, every asset, so we'd have to get that in somewhere, and maybe out here would be a good spot for that. Cool, we're going to have fire lookout towers out here as well. Very nice. There goes the train from Sharon. 75 people choosing to escape Sharon on that train. It's still busy as well, getting, getting used. 95% of the car trips saved. Very, very nice. What we'd like to see, isn't it? But uh, otherwise, uh, Katka Cabins is ticking along, isn't it? It's all right. So our first guest at Katka Cabins is Earl Smith, who is an uneducated senior, and he's currently confused, <laughs> as, the, as he says in the cabin. Let's hope he's okay. People chilling out over here by the lookout tower as well, although I don't necessarily agree with those skin-coloured shorts. It's a... Uh, and the socks and the sandals as well. <laughs> There's various offending items of apparel there, isn't there? So, because we're a bit out in the sticks here, I reckon we'd benefit from a little bus service that ferries people uh, back and to from Sharon 
over toward campsite. So there's a little little shuttle bus. So we'll have it stop here. And then I guess it doesn't really need to stop down the shutters. There's no reason for it to stop by the nuclear plant. Uh, and then just come straight back in here. We will identify that bus line as showing to cabins. Let's make sure that we keep on top of our naming conventions here after our uh, public transport reworking episode. And definitely the smallest bus, just the little uh, mini bus will be absolutely fine for that. Don't want a big articulated number going out that way. There's some crime in Sharon. How appropriate. We've got other people there as well. A little bit of Sharon walking, pulling everyone while we're here. Should we enjoy it? Look at that. Yes, please. Everyone taking the old trolley bus out as well. Nice little busy plaza, a few pocket cars, but that's okay. Everyone waiting for the trolley bus. Uh, back into Karen and further beyond as well. And hopefully that will encourage a few more visitors. I think we will actually also reduce the ticket price here just to bait some more people in. And we'll also put a advertising campaign on to get more visitors. I guess we'll put Main Park on as well, just so it's more attractive for people to turn up. We'll be happy with that. So let's place down some more of those log cabins and we'll detail them during our time lapse later on. Now let's go for more log cabins. So we'll give them each a little bit more room. So we'll have one there. One over here. And yeah, no reason why we can't have a few more down this way as well. Let's have a couple on the opposite side of the road at least. Kind of staggered if we can. Cool, so that's a ton of hotels and also uh, the have a few of them over here. Although thinking to it, maybe we want to bring that bridge a little bit further over this way. I feel like it'd be a bit more that would make more sense, wouldn't it? But then again, there is one over here, isn't there? No, I think that's fine. Uh, why don't we do a pedestrian bridge instead, actually? So if we lock into our grid here, is the game just going to let us draw across in one simple motion? Am I going to be able to call this episode, you won't believe these three simple bridge tricks? Don't mind a bit of a, a hump back in it. Uh, yeah, that's all right, actually. I think I'm happy with that. There we go. Happy customers leaving Kaka Cabins for, uh, for Sharon, unfortunately. <laughs> I need to stop. I need to start bitching about Sharon. I'm sure it's a lovely town at the right time of day when there's a full moon on the 3rd of August every 200 years. Cool. So we're going to have all these down. This is actually fully satisfied with them. We'll give them um, more things to do, obviously, once they have their nature reserve assets around them like this one. So they will be happy eventually. So that's great news. Uh, so turn now to the wonderful world of nature reserve because I'd like to start getting more assets down in here. Uh, so we've got camping site 1. We've also got... Tent camping site two as well, so let's not have these too close toward the cabins. I'd like the cabins to have some element of privacy at least. We got a couple of tent camps up here. Also, love to bring. Well, there's a nice little mountain ridge here, isn't it? that's quite natural in the landscape. So let's terraform that because if we're going to want to attract people into the park, we're going to have to make sure that everything's gated. So if we start from here with that slope, that should let us get a nature reserve side gate in here. I also added another one over here as well. So we actually have um, you know, people paying to get into the park because that's how the park life mechanic has to work. Uh, and then we'll grab some more of that nature reserve fancy decorations. I do want the ones with decorations here because I would like some form of lighting through here. Otherwise the nighttime cinematics are going to be... Incredibly dark, <laughs> so we'll try and avoid that if we can. Uh, yeah, let's bring some up here, and I reckon we can respect some viewpoints here, because we should be able to see. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, let's get some uh, camping sites up this way, to respect that sight line. Maybe another... What's going to come? We have the hunting cabins, which I guess our hotel cabins are kind of functioning as those, and actually making us more money, so... We probably will include a few of them, but not massive about having loads of them. we have also got the fishing cabins as well, haven't we? Like, no, that, that, that is quite exciting. I did forget about the fishing cabins. Uh, let's also bring this park area up onto the hill as well. And we will have a camping site that looks out over there. This is a, bit, a pretty cool place to stay, isn't it? Can we enjoy the nighttime view from here? I love how uh, distant Orchid Bay is getting now. Oh, look at that. Can we get a little... Can we sit by the fire here? Oh, the bloody vanilla trees are blocking the view. <laughs> That's so annoying. 
Uh, can we enjoy it from here? There we go. Maybe someone has just um, dropped a load in the portal and then wants to come and chill out to that view there. How fantastic is that? That is great, isn't it? <laughs> really nice. Uh, I do wonder, you know, guys, if we may be looking to uh, open 81 tiles with Orchid Bay. Not entirely sure. Still have a lot of passion for this city, and we are now rapidly running out of space with 25 tiles, so... Uh, maybe a poll on the channel at some point as to whether or not Orchid Bay enters an 81 tile vanilla build. Uh, I haven't ever done that before. We've only ever played with 25 tiles with uh, Palavan. Although I guess Navaria was a 81 tile opener, but we only really played with a 25 tile radius at least. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get these pathways hooked in. And hopefully send some people up there. It definitely makes sense as well, wouldn't it, to bring another little sneaky, sneaky path down this gully into the path that comes down this way. Fabulous news. We'll get lots of rocks around here as well. Let's possibly explore a little bit of false cliff face spice, if you will, around here. See if we can use some of these rock assets that we rarely see. Definitely get the boulder insights around here too. I also love a cave actually. That spot right there is like perfect for that vanilla cave, isn't it? And then we'll fuse a little cliff into it. Yes, there we go. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> That's the perfect use of the asset there, isn't it? Maybe some people going caving. Which, by the way, if you haven't seen some of those YouTube videos of people going cave diving, it's uh, incredibly nauseating. You know, they're like crawling on their stomachs like squashed between the, the crevices it's absolutely traumatic could not think of anything worse <laughs> personally and there we go people are now flooding into kaka cabins aren't they they cannot get enough uh, which is what we want to see because we need this to level up how are we doing for visitors now yeah it's just going to tick over over the episode isn't it there's not a vast amount we can really do to uh, bring more people in just gotta wait for it to tick over and we'll add those assets in our detail in time lots. And do we have any kind of nighttime view out here? Yeah, you can just see those fires burning. Of course, the lights on the nature trails as well is pretty cool. I really like that. Uh, and I guess as well, because we do have view index already unlocked, don't we? Definitely a spot for a viewing deck up here, isn't there? I guess we could do some custom campsites too. Maybe outside some of the cabins, actually, as though there's Maybe a larger party that's booked in, but the cabin can't hold them all, so there's some tents outside. Maybe for the kids or something. Great spot there, isn't it? So come and enjoy the view. Really nice. Uh, we did mention some other buildings. I wouldn't mind a radio mast out this way either, actually. Yeah, especially the... Maybe just a smaller one, or should we go for the larger one? I have that one there. Does that look horrific? Yes, it does. Didn't want that out here. Maybe over here, so we can combine radio waves with gamma waves. <laughs> I'm sure that's a, a recipe for a superhero, isn't it? Maybe the rival to the Atom Wolf. Which, by the way, I'll throw up on screen um, some artwork made by uh, you guys in the Discord for the Atom Wolf. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to make stuff like that. It's always really cool to see it come together. Uh, tremendous news, that's good though. But uh, yeah, I did want to have a look at the weather radar. would be a good shout up here too. And also those other unique buildings, yeah, the Climate Research Station. I feel like it really shouldn't be part of a nature reserve, but this should probably be like a separate research facility, maybe partnered with the Deep Space Radar. Yeah, I think we'll save those for another time, but definitely as part of a kind of outer line rural build. Maybe over towards Imperator's Air Force Base might be a more appropriate choice for that kind of infrastructure. Uh, deep Space Radars and climate research stations etc maybe a branch of um, Orchid Bay's Air Force Base etc probably makes a bit more sense over there doesn't it but uh, either way guys heading back to Kaka Cabins that does feel like a fun place for a detailing time lapse we've got a lot of this stuff to do around all of our cabins and get them all detailed up a few rocks along the river as well go a long way I think and uh, we'll just wait for the game to tick over I'll place in some more nature reserve assets. The, the one I'm really wanting is the bouldering site. Uh, to try and get that around some of these cliff faces. Lots of rock detailing, lots of nature detailing. And uh, refine our tree placements a little bit more over here as well, I think. But really fun build. I've been thoroughly enjoyed 
Doing this sort of stuff, and there you go. We're even coming to use it now. <laughs> be really cool. Oh my god! You just walk into the fire and came out as an entirely different person. What's going on there? <laughs> I'll leave you guys to decide the law on that one. But otherwise, let's do some nature reserve detailing, and we'll be right back.
Okay guys, let's have a little detail review of today's little park, shall we? So we come down the road now under the rail bridge and this whole area has really made me want to do kind of a Wyoming, Oregon kind of build, like, like Northwest Rural Pine America. This bridge, man, <laughs> has really affected my life. Really like it. Anyway, we're going to come down and uh, replace the main gate with the Nature Reserve Museum, almost as a place where you would come and check in. Maybe there's some leaflets here where you can book a boulder in site kind of excursion. Basically just a main office for the park. A lot better than the main gate, I thought. Uh, the bus back in two to Sharon is actually getting a fair bit of use now. And uh, all the buses nice and full. Uh, there's 126 actually waiting to get here from Sharon. So uh, really nice to see this getting used. I always love these little buses to you know, actually get used. Uh, we have our bridge back over, which we'll get to in a second. Coming down here now, all our riverside cabins have been decorated with various prop configurations. The signs and tiles, tables, uh, tents, little log benches down here. People now enjoying the lean-tos with the uh, really cute view out to the river and that bridge again. <laughs> Up there, enjoying it as much as I am. And then just different configurations. You will just see in our detail and time lapse and we'll see in the cinematics. We've also got fishing cabins at a select number of uh, cabins as well. Well, not yet, not every one of them has them. But that's really cool though, you know, it's kind of got that pier vibe, hasn't it? Classic City Skylines one pier. He's uh, just doing some fishing here, really cute. Uh, a few more cabins around here too, with some pathways uh, linking people back into toward them, and they just snakes off with some little fence detailing, creating some junctions within the network as an entrance and exit into the park as you move even further into rural Orchid Bay, if indeed we ever do open those 81 tile radiuses than there are, but, you know, abilities to get out that way with road networks. You can even see the highway over there, can't we, in a very far distance. Maybe a little rural highway interchange if we do end up getting out here. But we'll have to wait and see, of course. Uh, same vibe over here on this side of the river as we do cross over that bridge, and it's insanely busy. <laughs> it's like a... There's ridiculous amount of cars here. It's just, uh, it's pretty nuts, but loads of people walking up to the top of the hill, as you can see here. And it just carries on up. We've got a load of tents here as well with some cabins and campfires dropped in some of the zoo assets, almost as like proper toilets and maybe a little cafe, like a tuck shop on site. If you want something to eat while you're up here, then there's a little store that sells things. Uh, Modern Nature Reserve, tent sites and camping sites. A little viewpoint here has a really nice view, one of the better views in the city actually. And nice to see people actually using it because you can see that lone viewpoint on Mad Mountain here. <laughs> that no one cares about. But a very, very cool view to that skyline all the way over there, right? You can even see a little bit of two church in the distance too with the um, wind turbines over there as well. Uh, falling off the mountain down towards the rocks, we have some more fence deeds here and here with rocks and overgrowth. And a really appropriate usage of the bouldering sites here by the rocks. If anyone's ever seen my first season or the second season of 5B1C, but my first season, uh, you might recognize this kind of idea of placing the bouldering sites near the rocks. So nice little use of this asset, I think. Really cute people. Oh, falling off. I've never seen the animation before, actually. <laughs> Surely that would still hurt, though. She just landed spine first on a rock that's only protected by... What is a relatively thin mattress? She's going back for it again though. Is she going to fall off again? Oh, they all fall off, don't they? How have I never noticed that animation before? Has anyone else noticed that? <laughs> I've never seen them <laughs> repeatedly fall. Hilarious. This guy going to do it again? Yes. Well, no wonder, mate, if you're sticking your arms up like that. Hold them properly. <laughs> what does he expect? And then our pathway comes up here to that lookout tower. And we've also just redrawn the forest and done a bit more terraforming around our train line that came in last episode. And then it all just it ties up really nicely. This roundabout's probably a little bit too busy now. We probably need to upgrade this to be something else or maybe just a little bit wider. It's got a little bit busier than I anticipated. But there is still more development to be done out here. We've got many more spaces to get involved with. And we can have a little look at what radius we have to play with within the 25 tile boundary. There's still some areas near Sharon. I need to be developed but again we are rural vibes here so it's not going to be a massive continuous expanse but a really fun park build today 
definitely my favourite park in the city now. I'm really enjoying this area of Orchid Bay. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, as always, likes, comments, and shares below really do help bring more people to my channel. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Don't forget to let me know what you think about a possible 81 tile Orchid Bay. I'm debating whether or not we actually go for the full 81 tiles because I've still got so much love for this city and we could make it last even longer and bring Orchid Bay into the years of age, I guess, and keep developing different areas of it. We're only at 80,000 population, so we could still go significantly higher than that if we wanted to do another major metropolitan area. But that is a conversation for a future egg to deal with, but otherwise, please do enjoy some cinematics from today's build. I'm sure they'll be pretty cute and quite dark at night time, but again, enjoy that huge sprawl in front of you. But otherwise, I'll shut up and leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.